Moving on to our next example, we have to take all of these algebraic expressions and again, find the domain and range of each and then state whether it is a function or not. So the expression in part A is y is equal to one over x minus four. And if you recall, this is a transformation of the parent function one over x, which looks like this. So all we're doing is we're taking this parent function one over x and then moving it uh, to the right by four. So notice how in our expression, the one we're dealing with one over x minus four, x cannot equal four because if x is four then we'd have zero in the denominator and then one divided by zero is undefined. So x equals four represents a vertical asymptote and that makes sense because in the parent function x equals zero is the vertical asymptote so if we shift the function by four units to the right then the new vertical asymptote will be at x equals four. So this graph would look something like this. I'm not going to get into too much detail about how to graph it. You could even go and review the grade 11 videos when we did an example of transforming a parent function one over x. We're actually going to have a full chapter dedicated to reciprocal functions in this course. But you should be pretty comfortable with knowing that this graph looks like this. At an x value of 4, there is a vertical asymptote. If you want to make a table of values for values that are greater than 4 and less than 4, you can do that to see the shape. But this is how it looks like. So let's figure out what the domain of this graph would be or of this uh, expression. So notice how x can be any value except for 4. So the domain would be x is an element of real numbers. It could be anything. However, x cannot equal 4. For the range, likewise, notice how the y values can be anything, but there is a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So the graph never touches this y value of 0. So the y value can be anything. However, y cannot equal zero. And is this a function or not? Well, we can just run a vertical line through it. When we run a vertical line, notice how there's never two points that touch the vertical line throughout the domain of the function. So it does pass the vertical line test, so it is a function. Moving on to part B, we got y is equal to 3 sine x plus 1. And to start this question off, I drew out the parent function y is equal to sine x. And if you remember, sine x, for the domain, it goes on forever. It's just a wave. And it's a wave that's alternating between a max value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So if you remember to grade 11 functions, what you would do is you would take the parent function and then transform it, shift it up by 1 vertically stretch it by three, so the amplitude would be three, and then graph your new transform function, and then it's easy to tell what the domain and range would be. However, in this question, let's, uh, let's try to do it a little differently. We're going to be graphing trig functions anyway a lot in this course as well. So let's switch it up a bit. Let's try to do this in a different way. So let's rewrite our transform function here. So we got y is equal to 3, and now this sine x in the brackets, from our graph of the parent function, notice how we could take a max value of plus 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. And then this plus 1 here is at the end. So if we want to find the maximum or minimum value of the whole expression, we can easily do that. So this expression will take a maximum value when this bracket takes a maximum value. So at a maximum value of plus 1, we'd have 3 times positive 1, which is 3, plus 1 is equal to 4. So the maximum value of this whole expression is 4. The minimum value of this whole expression will happen when this bracket takes a minimum value of negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So this function here is alternating between the values 4 and negative 2. 
Now, if you're more comfortable working with this expression in the way that you learned in grade 11, that's fine too. It's actually probably the more proper way to be totally honest. I just wanted to expose you guys to something a little different. So, if we take this function and work with it in the way that we're taught, so we know that the equation of the axis of the parent function is at zero and then shifting it up by one, we know that the equation of the axis would be at one. So the wave would be alternating on this line y is equal to one or this line would be the middle of the wave. And then this amplitude of three, so if the wave has an amplitude of three, we know that the max value would be one plus three, which is four, and the minimum value would be one minus three, which would be negative two. So the function would look something like this. It would just be alternating like that forever. So either way works. This is probably the more proper way. So if you're used to doing that way, go ahead. So let's get into figuring out what the domain and range of this expression would be. The domain of a trig function, notice how there is never any restrictions on it. It goes on forever to the positive and negative side. So the domain is x is an element of real numbers. And then the range of this expression is y can take any value as long as it's between this minimum value of negative 2 and this maximum value of positive 4. You can also see it in this graph. The wave is alternating between a minimum value of negative 2 and a maximum value of positive 4. So the range here would be y is an element of real numbers. However, y has to be between negative 2 uh, so it's got to be greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to positive 4. And then finally, is this a function or not? Well, we can just run a vertical line through it. A trig function is always a function. There's never going to be any point where the vertical line will touch the graph twice. So it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. And finally, part C, we got x is equal to y squared. Now, you've probably seen this uh, expression many times before, but let's review it. So, notice how the x is sort of dependent on the y in this case. Usually, the y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable, but it's almost like the y and the x got switched, and now the x is the dependent variable and y is the independent variable. So let's make a table of values. So I put in values for y that we can work with because it's a lot easier to do so. So if y is equal to negative two, then x would be negative two squared, which would be four. Negative one squared would be one, zero, one, four. So this would be the table of values for this expression right here. So taking these points and then plotting them on a graph, 4 and negative 2 would be down here. 1 and negative 1 would be here. 0 and 0 would be here. 1 and 1 is here. And then 4 and 2 is over here. So if we connect these points, notice how it's sort of like a sideways parabola. And now from the graph, it's easy to figure out what the domain and range would be. So the domain, notice how all of the x values are greater than or equal to zero. So x is an element of real numbers, but x is greater than or equal to zero. Now what about the range? The y values can be anything. There's no restriction on them. They go from positive infinity all the way down to negative infinity because these arrows keep going on forever. So there's no restriction on the y, so y is an element of real numbers. Is this a function or not? Let's run the vertical line test. It's not. It's pretty much failing everywhere, right? There's multiple points that touch the vertical line on this relation. So that means that there are multiple y values for x values. So an example would be this x value of one here. Notice how there are multiple y values, negative one and one for an x value of one that can happen in a function. So this is not a function. It fails the vertical line test.